This is Matthew with Another World Terraria, where I teach and inspire you on the topics of rare plants and artistic nature displays. In this video, I'm going to cover the key aspects of plant fertilization, including types of fertilizers I use and recommend, application methods, strength or concentration, and frequency of application. Fertilization is an important part of growing healthy, attractive plants and helping them fight disease and insects. Nutrient-deprived plants are weaker, more vulnerable, and don't look as healthy. Often the foliage yellows, pales, gets stunted, blooming is weak, or doesn't occur. Thankfully, fertilization doesn't have to be very difficult, complicated, or time-consuming. It certainly can be if you want to go into the details of chemicals, nutrients, specific plant needs based on genus, and so forth, but I haven't gone to that depth and all my plants grow just fine. So if you're a beginner or otherwise aren't sure about fertilizers for tropical terrarium plants, I've got you covered in this video. Let's start by going over the types of fertilizers I use. First type of fertilizer I use is slow release pellets. I only use one type of fertilizer in that category, which is Osmocote Plus. I've moved over to using this fertilizer for almost all of my plants. It's extremely convenient, lasts a while, and works very well. I use it for bioactive grow bins, potted plants, mounted epiphytes, immersed plants like Busi, and submerged aquatics. The other type of fertilizer I use comes in a granulated form, which is mixed with water. I use a couple different ones, including Sea Grow and Grow More Urea Free Orchid Fertilizer. Both are good as a general fertilizer for a variety of plants. I use the Urea Free Grow More for carnivorous plants and most orchids. Now let's talk about application methods for these different fertilizers. For Osmocote Plus, I just apply the pellets near the roots of the plants. In some cases, I insert the pellets into the substrate, particularly when the conditions are going to be very wet or underwater, such as Bicephalandra, immersed aquatics, as well as submerged aquatics in Wabikusa. Putting the pellets below the substrate keeps them in place, ensures that the majority of the nutrients reach the plant roots, and can also sometimes reduce algae by limiting how many nutrients are on the surface of the substrate where the light is. I even use Osmocote Plus on epiphytic mounted plants by poking the pellet into the substrate so it doesn't fall off the mount. Now let's talk about application methods for Sea Grow and Grow More granulated fertilizers. First, you have to mix the granules with water. I use distilled water as I do with my regular watering and misting. Distilled water because it lacks chemicals, minerals, etc., which are going to be harmful to some of your plants and may cause buildups on plants, pots, and containers. I apply these liquid fertilizers from a misting bottle by hand or from a pump sprayer. Let's move on to talk about fertilizer dosage and frequency. We'll start with Osmocote Plus and talk about dosage. I don't even measure the amount of Osmocote Plus that I use or have any kind of dosage guide, although you could follow the instructions on the package if you wanted to. But for bins, I just randomly sprinkle some of the pellets around the plants. How many pellets you use depends on how big the plants are, how heavy of a feeder the plant is, and other factors. I suggest using low dosages and then increasing it as needed if it seems like the plants want more nutrients. Now we'll talk about the frequency of applying Osmocote Plus. The pellets are slow release, and according to the packaging, they can last up to six months. In my experience, the wetter they are, the less time they're going to last. For example, in Bucephalandra bins, submerged aquatics, etc., the pellets are going to dissolve faster and release more nutrients. For that reason, I'd advise that you use a lower dosage in those conditions and then apply it more frequently, as opposed to a normal or large dose, which is going to result in excess nutrients. Generally, with Osmocote Plus, I'd suggest reapplication at least every six months, maybe more frequently in very wet conditions, but again, in that latter situation, you're going to want to use lower dosages. Now let's go to Sea Grow, Grow More, and Similar Granulated Fertilizers and talk about dosage. Generally, I mix these to 25% to 50% of the recommended concentration on the packaging. I like to do lower strength more frequently as opposed to a higher strength less frequently. Lower concentrations are good for plants which don't need or like a lot of nutrients, for example, carnivorous plants, other plants which come from low nutrient environments, and moss cultures. In those cases, I'd use 25% concentration. Most of my other tropical plants do well at 50% concentration, but some can even take 100% of the instructed concentration if they're larger and tend to feed heavily, for example, if they grow in nutrient-rich conditions in the wild. Now we'll talk about frequency of applying the granulated fertilizers. It depends on the type of plants, how large they are, plant dormancy or rest period status, and other factors. In general, for most of the year with tropical plants, I will fertilize every other week or every few weeks. Again, it's best to use less and just see how they react, then do more or more often as needed. 
As you can see, fertilization isn't that complicated and it's very beneficial if you want to grow and bloom healthy plants. If you enjoyed this video, then you'll probably like a lot of other videos on my channel, so I welcome you to explore what I have to offer.